Yo ho, yo ho, a pirate's life for me. Welcome back to another episode of Stu's Reviews Unboxing. Halloween edition. <laughs> <laughs> Right, we should probably open some tech. Happy Halloween, everybody. I hope you're having a very festive period. Uh, drinking, being merry, and enjoying the spooky times. There's my new studio assistant. Didn't last very long. Mm. Right, you scabby sea dogs. Let's get going with the first puzzle. I'm gonna start with a big one. <sighs> Right, now I'm gonna have to use a smaller knife, I think, for the majority of this episode, I'd imagine. We've got another robot vacuum. Now I love robot vacuums, always have done, always will though. Uh, no, I haven't always have done, actually. I did change my mind. I used to hate them, but actually I really like them now. So, this is the Procenic. In terms of appearance, it's really nice, actually. It's got this kind of checkered carbon effect on the top. Uh, with a kind of mirrored finish on there. Simple button control on the top. On the bottom, it looks like we've got one very large brush with a big compartment here. Ooh, that is a nice, sizable compartment. Really like that. Very good. The wheels seem extremely grippy and large. Does look like it could possibly have some good ground clearance, but only one brush. We've got some kind of sensors on the front here. Let's get it hooked up and see how well it performs. The M8 Pro from ProScenic seems to be a really comprehensive robot vacuum. It's not an overly large unit in itself and is capable of vacuuming and mopping, but what I really love is the large empty station for weeks of use without having to empty the robot. Also, it's got another unusual feature I've never seen before. It comes with its own remote, which is quite handy for those in the house who want to control it but haven't got the app. Another bonus for going for the M8 Pro from Pro Scenic. Next up, let's go for a smaller parcel, shall we? We've got the Tranya uh, F1 Crystal Clear Core Wireless Charging Case. Occasionally I get a good few headphones. Let's have a listen to these. Oh, wow. These are excellent. Okay, very good. There are some things I'm not so keen on, like it has a physical button on the top, which is a bit unusual. I guess some people might prefer that over the kind of capacitive touch stuff that we see quite often. Uh, but that's also a nice touch, the little display on the front that shows the battery life of the actual ear pods, earphones. That's really quite cool. Seven out of 10. Okay, we've got a really unusual one here that doesn't seem to be packaged in any appropriate manner whatsoever. What is that? Oh my lord. What the f It's got all these like lights on the inside. Look at this. It says there's like a button on the top. It says to touch it. What did I just do? There's a light come on on the forehead. Oh my God! I can change between different colors for some reason. This is spooky in its own own right. This is the weirdest thing I have ever been sent. International Medical Organization has proved that the use of specific wavelengths of light can enhance the vitality of skin cells I refuse to believe that wearing a piece of plastic on my face that shines bright LEDs upon my skin is going to cause me any benefit. Would you seriously consider wearing one of these? Mad. Absolute madness. We have got something that says Yeedy on the top. Another robot hoover here. It looks like it's got a camera on top. And it looks like it's got a bunch of sensors on the front as well. On the bottom, we've got, again, just the one sweeping brush. Another big, big... Oh, that's interesting. We've got a kind of mixture here of bristles and rubber flaps on the bottom for the spinny round thing. That's the, uh, obviously, the 
technical term for that. Good ground clearance again. Good springs for the uh, stabilization. Okay, let's get this plugged in. This seems like a great little robot vacuum. The fact it has no large protruding periscope head like lots of others means that it's actually a lot slimmer and can fit under a lot more stuff, and yet still has advanced obstacle detection with its lasers. It's this reason that I would give it super high marks, and overall it's a great piece of kit. And having the hindsight of being able to look at the price, at the time of filming is currently only £209 on offer over on Amazon, which is a bargain. Okay, we've got the G-Tide R1. Never heard of G-Tide, ever. Construction seems actually very, very pleasant. It's got an aluminium exterior. Um, it seems very, very similar to the Amazfit lineup in terms of the GTR. Uh, it does have that kind of rounded feel about it, although what's quite nice is that the little digits, the numerals on the outside, are kind of like a bit shiny. Okay, so this seems very, very rudimentary. It's not an OLED display, and it's kind of got all the sort of standard sort of stuff that you'd expect. The, even the software is very, very, very similar to the Amazfit lineup. It's not too bad, it's not too bad. I wouldn't be super disappointed based off initial impressions, but there's nothing I would say extra, extra special about this one, I'm afraid, but not too bad. Right, inside here we have an unusual paper parcel, another paper parcel. Okay, we've got the XGODI, XGODI X15. Never a good sign, is it, when they ship power adapters out separately in separate bags. That appears to have four cameras along with the flash. And actually, this is not too bad. It feels much lighter than anticipated. Boom, oh, the battery's not even in there. And there is a lot to be said for companies that allow replacement batteries as simple as that. I do miss the times, and there here is proof that it doesn't have to be ridiculously big to actually allow you to do that. So initial impressions are relatively snappy, snappier than I thought it would be. The screen is okay, nowhere near OLED, but it's not terrible. What about the photo? Let's take a selfie, shall we? It makes that noise when you power it off as well. It is very typical of a slightly cheaper experience, but it doesn't feel too bad. If that is quite a cheap device, it's, you know, it's going to tie you over between getting something potentially a little bit more expensive and a bit more, uh, or less jingly. Oh, okay. Oleap uh, headset stand designed for the Oleap Pilot P200B. We've got the Oleap Pilot, I guess, P200B. Noise cancelling open air Bluetooth headset. Oh, look at that. 10 out of 10 for the packaging. Oh, look at that. That's a neat little case. I'll give them 8 out of 10. Right. Oh, wow. Hey, look at this. This is fun. This is the first time I've seen open ear headphones like this with an actual headset piece on it itself. That's quite interesting. So it just kind of sits in front of my ears like this. Right, let's give this a bash. Oh, surprisingly good, actually. They're not the most comfortable. There's quite a bit of overhang at the back. The actual audio seems quite nice. Good clarity across the board. Interesting. What about the actual mic? Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Studio Reviews. Today, you're listening to the Oleap Pilot microphone. No idea what this sounds like. Okay, so the audio is okay. The mic is a little bit lacking, but then I don't have to listen to the mic all the time. Interesting design as well. I can kind of flip this back. Nice case though, and this little charging dock is pretty cool that it comes with as well. Okay, we have got the Pataka mag case for iPhone 12 Pro Max, which I don't have anymore. But no problem, not a problem, we can at least have a look at it. Obviously we've taken a look at Pataka stuff before and I absolutely love it. And this is no different, this is a really nice colour actually, first time I've seen the blue. Take a look at that. That's really nice. Uses aramid fibre, 
to protect your phone. In fact, I have shot one of these with a shotgun. I'll link that episode below. Their new shipping cases is, it's all made from 100% biodegradable material. Well done, Pitaka, round of applause right there. Well done, that's smashing. Ooh, I don't know what phone, is this for my phone? No, that's for a larger phone. Okay, looks like we've got some new stuff from Pataka though. Again, we've got the black aramid fiber. We've got more black aramid fiber. Oh, two-tone aramid fiber. Kind of looks a bit, a little bit like a tweed. Hold on, this is, it is indeed. Not for this phone. It doesn't matter because I really like the new packaging. So massive round of applause for Pataka on that one. Mystery Chinese parcel with lots of warnings on the side, which is what we like. This is the Hollyland Lark M1 wireless microphone set. This looks quite interesting. It looks very, very similar to the new uh, DJI microphones, which I despise, not because they're bad. Supposedly they're excellent, I haven't tried them myself, but because they have a massive DJI logo on each of the microphones, basically giving themselves free advertising in people's videos every time they're used, which is ridiculous. In fact, these have done the same thing. Hold on a minute. Nice case though, nice case. Comes with a charging case. We've got the receiver. That looks like it goes into your camera potentially. The two microphones that then clip on. Well look, it's got their logo on it. Massive logo, I hate that so much. That is just so irritating. It does come with these little things though, these little windshields. So I'm wondering if that will hide. No is the answer. That just goes on top, I think, like that. The connector for an iPhone, and it would appear to be another type of phone connector so I can hook the receiver up. Let's plug them in and just test the audio real quick. Despite the logo on the front of these things, I actually really quite like them. The sound is okay, but they're really, really quick to set up and they're really, really neat. So overall, they get good marks for just being a really quick and accessible way to get wireless audio onto anything. And at the moment, I'm recording this directly onto my phone using one of the included cables. How cool is that? Right, you salty silly dogs. We're about halfway through now. And I want to say a quick message about this backdrop. Last month, I asked you what you thought. Did you like it? And it was kind of a resounding no. It wasn't that you hated it, but it, you didn't like it compared to the previous background. Now, this was never intended on being the permanent backdrop for this desk. So I'm looking for something else to put behind me. I can't unfortunately put the bookcases behind me at this moment in time because we've moved into a new space and it doesn't quite fit in the way I want it to. So please, in the comments below, do let me know what you think would look really good behind me. These are all my current patrons. I wanna say a massive thanks to you guys because you're a real help and you've been a massive help over the past few months as well as things like the cost of living increases. It's been insane and we're all struggling for which is why over on Patreon, I'm opening up a new tier, which one that we originally had, but we kind of closed it because we moved on to a more, uh, well, slightly different tier system. But now I'm opening up the cheapest tier that you can subscribe to over on Patreon, which is only $1 a month. And this was just my way of making sure that one, anyone who wants to be a part of the Patreon page, but can't quite afford it, can drop down to the cheapest possible amount that Patreon will let me charge to be a part of that. But also, it's a way of just me saying thank you guys. Look, if you want to get involved in the behind the scenes, then feel free to join the basic tier. And the $4 tier is still there and you will still get access to the charity auction, which we hold every single month. And in fact, these are the items in this month's charity auction, which will start today and last for a week. So if you want to get hold of any of those and put in some blind bids, do head over to the links over on Patreon if you're a Patreon. But that is for the bronze tier and above. Let's crack on. Okay, these are the Tribit MoveBuds H1. Okay, these are active style. They've kind of got this snaky type thing, but we haven't got any charge, unfortunately, so we're gonna have to come back to these. I tell you what, it really is an audio month because I've been sent this. The Odin 6, 4, I'm reading it upside down. I'm almost certain that I've been sent this before. 
Okay, so it's a very, very large bar. It's got some hookups on the back so I can actually mount it to the wall, which is nice. It's got this kind of cool little orange display. It reminds me of like old Nixie clocks. Not hideously bad, but I think it really does lack quite a bit of bass there. And that was on maximum volume as well. Would I recommend it? Mm, probably not. Ooh. Oh, Millsy Night Vision Binoculars BNV20. <gasps> you tell you point out a man who doesn't want a pair of night vision binoculars. You won't find one. Oh my god, it's got a rangefinder, it's got an angle in it. <gasps> Have a look, it's got like a little display in there and everything. Well, this is possibly one of the best things I've ever, ever had. And it looks like I can re actually record footage as well, because it's got an SD card slot. So this is insane. It's completely pitch black out there. You cannot see a thing. As you can see over there, absolutely nothing. You can see something reflecting off the side, but it is absolutely pitch black. But look at this, look, look, look. You can see the trackway. How cool is that? Just to confirm, there is absolutely nothing there. It's pitch black, yet there's there's nothing. What's that? What's that? Hohen Go. This, to me, it looks to be an auto-tracking holder for your phone. With a... Oh, that's neat. I quite like that. Now, apparently, if I just do this, apparently it turns on smart tracking. Oh! Hey, look at this! That is a great idea! Because now I've got full tracking on my phone by just doing that. That's interesting though, because turning off smart tracking is that, or that. Look, if you're animating with your hands, that could set it off. So you literally have to make sure that you don't put your hands in the shot at all, because if you accidentally do that, it could possibly stop the tracking. Very interesting. Does it do up and down? Oh, it does up and down. And it's a really awesome design. I'm going to be keeping that. Cotogni. Cotogni? Cotogni. Cotogni P3 wireless earbuds. Again, another brand I've never heard of. Mm. Not a great deal of uh, umph there in the sound. Four out of ten at most. Try to try it once. Not a massive fan of the active style. Fumbly to put in your ears. Okay, I'd give them six out of 10. They're not as good as I'd hoped. Some of the other Tribit stuff has been absolutely incredible. These weren't it for me. They just weren't it. Another speaker, thumping 360 degree sound, the Tronsmart T7. I will be the judge of thumping because whatever this is, this looks incredible. The Tronsmart Bang Mini. And it's got the big word made for parties. So let's have a party. Really solid. It does remind me a lot of the Tribit stuff. We've got this massive handle that I really quite like. Very grabbable. It's got lights on the side. Look at that. That's really quite good, actually. It's not the best speaker I've ever heard, but it certainly is a admirable attempt at making something very, very good audio, but being rugged, this feels super rugged, like I could throw it around at a party. It's IP, IPX6, uh, it's got stereo pairing, it's got NFC connection as well, and it works as a built-in power bank, apparently. Top marks, I would give this eight out of 10 for the form factor and sound quality combined. 
Sound on its own, seven out of 10. It's called the Thumping 360 Degree Sound, the Tronsmart T7. So this, I guess, does look even more like the kind of storm box that I was talking about before. It's got a very rugged feeling about it. Oh, It's got a very, very pleasing click dial on the top that's obviously for volume, so let's turn it on. Wow. Wow. Wow, that is actually very, very good. I'd probably say the sound is even marginally better than the slightly larger one. Not as loud, evidently, and not as, uh, as, as party-like, but the actual quality of sound is very, very good, and it does have a really nice punch. So, they aren't wrong when they say thumping 360-degree sound. Nice one, Tronsmart. I really like this. Tronsmart T7. Top marks. I'd say that's 8 out of 10, easily. <laughs> So this is the V-Zoom 8 channels power over ethernet. So this is a surveillance kit, interesting. And then this here is obviously a camera that goes as part of that network, the V-Zoom 5 megapixel PoE uh, camera. Do you know what? I had considered very, very recently to move in to a PoE camera system, power over ethernet. And it means that you can kind of ring up cameras all over the place but there are downsides to it one being quite often you need something like this which is a bit monstrous it is you need a server rack for this but it has hdmi it's got uh ports out so you can record uh, all the footage too but it is a proper piece of security kit this is solid that is a piece of solid metal that and it does look like it's going to be proper high-end stuff. So I might have to save that for another episode. But that's, that is everything in today's episode. Wow, that has been a bit of a weird one. Some incredible stuff, some weird stuff, and lots of audio equipment. But you know what I think has been my favourite items? I'm afraid I'm going to have to pick two here because... This was incredible. Absolutely love this, the Ho and Go, a really valuable tool to creators, 100%. You've got to get this if you use your phone to create with. That is definitely the winner, but as a side, little side one, how can you not pick night vision goggles as a winning item? Totally incredible. Now, if you want to check out anything that you've seen in today's bizarre episode, do take a look at the links below because I'll leave them all there. And as I said earlier, if you want to join us on Patreon for the behind the scenes episodes or the charity auctions, do head to the links below. Again, there'll be a video in the description describing a little bit more about how you can join the charity auction. And I'll leave you with this final message, guys. We're all devils and black sheep and really bad eggs. Drink up me hearties, yo-ho. Mm. Mm. It's a pirate's life for me.